good morning children welcome back okay so in our previous class we have seen how we can use practically use this poetical devices in our poem is it we are discussed about uh, certain poetical device like rhyming words rhyming scheme how we are to use and about the imagery and also we have seen about the three things that is uh, simile metaphor and personification all those things we have discussed so hope you remembered all those things and started to uh, practically use in your poems i think so so now we are moving a little bit further that is some more uh, deeply we are going into that discussing about some more poetical devices how we can use it in our poem okay first we can start with an easy one that is alliteration you all know is it what is alliteration so it is the in a line the if for the each word beginning with the same alphabet same letter okay so maybe two words you can make it as alliterated words so uh, in our first poem have you uh, remember the first line let me but live my life let me uh, let live so beginning with the letter l okay do you remember that yes that is alliteration so when you are writing poem more than two words you can make it as alliterated words if it is possible all words you can make with alliterated words except this articles all those things you can lift remaining you can make it as alliterated words okay so the whole if it is possible whole stanza you can arrange in such a way so this all things will make your poem um, that is poetic no yes so this alliteration in tamil if you are talking about you will be saying in morning that is first letter the uh, same words repeating all those things yes so now alliteration hope you understand what is alliteration so use when you are writing poem use all those things okay children so now next thing is we are going to talk about this um, assonance so what is the difference between this alliteration and assonance assonance see the vowel letters a e i o u that sound will be repeated again in the same line that is called as assonance assonance and consonants also there so here we can talk about this assonance this vowel sounds repeated again in a po in a line same thing so let me uh, quote you an example from your poem that is from the fifth poem we will study the secret of machines their second stanza first line some coal and oil is all we ask all ask beginning with the that all sound no all we ask that is assonance okay so this all ask beginning with that same sound that we call it as assonance okay so now we have seen two poetic device that is alliteration and assonance okay when you are using this vowel sound repeatedly in a line we call it as assonance so one more thing that you can uh, use it in your poem that make it stylish is beginning with the same word that is each line two or three consecutive lines beginning with the same word that we call it as anaphora okay so uh, that uh, fifth poem itself take it as an example first stanza we were taken from the war bed and the mine we were uh, melted in the furnace and the pit we were uh, cast and wrought and hammered to design uh, all those things. we were cut and filed and tooled and gashed to fit all those things you have studied all these stanza what is the speciality about this first stanza all these stanza this lines begin with the word we were we were repeatedly with the same word word it is beginning so it is called as anaphora understand so anaphora is different and see next when when we are talking about this anaphora you have to think about this repetition also repetition means not only a single word a group of words repeated again in the same line or the next line it is totally repeated it is called repetition so 
you might have studied in the ninth grade a poem uh, and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep two times the same lines are repeated so that is called repetition okay so Uh, can you uh, identify the dif uh, difference between this anaphora and also this repetition anaphora the words are repeated maybe one word the first first word from the consecutive lines it should be repeated that is called the same uh, the words like see here we wear we wear we wear okay do you remember that so that is anaphora and when this line totally repeated we call it as repetition so and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep like that the same words totally um, see no men are foreign no men and the no country so here this also first line and the last line again it is repeated so we call it as repetition first and the last lines are repeated so that is the thing okay so now today we start with the uh, alliteration assonance and the next thing we talk about this anaphora and repetition okay hope you can keep in mind so yes let me go somewhat uh, slow one more time our repetition as well as this anaphora don't confuse it as well as this assonance and alliteration too okay alliteration whatever the letter may be uh, the beginning with the same letter in the same line we call it as alliteration and if it is uh, that uh, vowel sounds repeated again that is what example i had given you some water coal and oil is all we ask all ask is do you understand yes there is a difference so next we are going to talk about this onomatopoeia okay onomatopoeia is the sound okay so you don't get a chance to read our uh, seventh poem as yes, a children yes so when you are getting time go through it there it's a, um, a house in the yam street that is a, a nice poem you have to read it there a line is there lights flicker on and off the sound no sound if we are mention see if we are uh, the throwing the coin the tingling sound the tickling of water all those things the sound if they are mentioning we call it as this uh, onomatopoeia the sound so that is the onomatopoeia then we are going to talk about this oxymoron two opposite things in the same line if we are mentioning see that same thing we can give it as example for oxymoron as well as this onomatopoeia the sound of that switch that is we call it as onomatopoeia and as well as here the same line light flicker on off this on opposite only off is it two opposite things that words we are talking about that is in the same line we call it as oxymoron okay oxymoron that is um, for an example see uh, we will say we will use this word sweet revenge the revenge cannot be sweet is it children so sweet is a positive word this revenge is a negative word see opposite of that so but we will when you are we are using this word sweet revenge to opposite things you understand ma that is oxymoron okay so to opposite words we are using it in a same line we call it as this oxymoron okay till now we have seen this today onomatopoeia and oxymoron what is onomatopoeia the sound okay then we learned about this oxymoron to opposite uh, sounds we are talking about that is oppo uh, that is um, oxymoron then next uh, have you heard about this word paradox in tamil if you want to use this paradox means we'll call it as muran okay so see when the seventh poem the paradox is used there so we can here see there uh, first you have to have an idea about that poem there about a, a mysterious house they were talking about first they talk about that house then about that uh, uh, a tree nearby so there was a tree near the house and uh, it was uh, the same appearing same it will never grow tall or it will never become short it was a city so it is given there it just sits there never getting small and ever growing tall this is a paradox 
okay parallel movement so no trees will be uh, sitting in one place that is uh, and also it won't uh, be remain the same it will go it's a living thing is it it will at least it will grow it will, it will fade away something it will come and will be there so but here it is given that um, it just sits there never getting small or ever growing tall oh things it will never do that is the paradox here so now we are going to talk about see this epithet epithet have you ever heard this epithet uh, if i want to say it in tamil we will use it as the adai moli usually um, if we are mentioning any heroes or heroines or someone else we are talking about we will give an uh, name before that their original name before that we will uh, that uh, if you are yes you are very much interested in vijay if you are talking about vijay you will be telling us ilaya talabadi like that you will be giving a name for that man is it so uh, if you use that word itself you will come to know if we are talking about vijay is it so that is epithet okay so that means a describing word used before a noun that is an adjective used before a adjective adjective is a describing word is it if we are using an describing word before that noun we call it as epithet okay so that is what we use in same uh, in the uh, second complaining street so what kind of a street is a complaining street complaining is an adjective here so um, um if an adjective is used before a noun we call it as epithet got it children then another word it will come uh, that is a uh, transferred epithet this epithet is different from transferred epithet epithet you got an idea is it man adjective a describing word used before a noun that is an epithet for example complaining street keep in mind so now we are going to talk about this transferred epithet so what is this transferred epithet what's the difference between this epithet and transferred epithet i will tell you see usually epithet means uh, a word a describing word given for that noun but here i will uh, quote you an example for make, uh, show you the difference okay so i will tell you an example for transferred epithet that is winter starved so here winter starved is a transferred epithet so in winter season people will stop but winter season will never stop but it is given the word is given winter starved got it children so that is transferred okay during winter season people will stop okay that is what the poet want to uh, give you the idea but he used uh, winter starved okay so that means during winter season the people will stop but for the, the starving people only they would have the, given that epithet but here they had used this winter stout so it is give, uh, we can tell it as it is transferred epithet okay so next thing uh, one more thing i want to explain so yeah, today we are seeing about uh, this anaphora and also uh, that uh, repetition as well as we have seen about this uh, assonance alliteration and then we have seen about this uh, paradox oxymoron onomatopoeia that type of words we have seen as well as now we are going to see about this one more word it is their rhetorical question in your poem you can ask a question can use some questions so what kind of question you can ask in the sense rhetorical question that means see we will be getting only the same answer positive answer from our reader that kind of question we can ask that is a rhetorical question this rhetorical questions can be used in the um, speech also you might have learned how to uh, write a good speech they are they can they are using this word you can use rhetorical question that means when we are uh, the orator when we are standing before a group and talking to someone we should use rhetorical question if you are feeling that there will be some negative answer you can't use that question because they will respond is it they will be beginning to uh, shout from there saying something negative so that chance you should not give to your listeners okay that is thing so in the same thing it is applicable in the poem too you can use some rhetorical question this rhetorical question example is also you can find it in the seventh unit poem so if you want to understand more about different kind of poetic devices it's better you read the seventh unit poem 
okay you did not get chance to read that as it is a deleted portion but um, it will be very useful for your higher studies too when you are uh, learning when you are reading all those devices is it children okay yes today this in this class we have seen many poetic devices yes okay so first thing we have seen about alliteration hope you remember that that is the first beginning with the first alphabet same so assonance means the vowel sound will be same and also we have seen about that uh, uh, poetic devices uh, anaphora and repetition anaphora means the first word repeated in the consecutive lines and repetition is the total lines will be repeated for you that is a repetition onomatopoeia is the sound okay so when you are uh, that uh, the ray uh, the drain drops when it is falling what sound you will get that sound you can use it in the poem when you are throwing coins what sound you will get all those things when you are this all sounds when you are mentioning it as words an imagery you can create is it ma that's very important so this all are uh, the ways how you can attract your readers okay if someone is reading your poem it should be attractive so for that you have to uh, use such kind of poetic devices so hope you have you are keep in mind the previous class what are the poetic devices i have used so uh, today also we have gone through different kinds of poetic devices this all all will help you in your uh, 11th grade as well as 12th grade when you are moving further with literature it will help you i think so so make it practically apply all these poetic devices okay hope you will do that i am thinking okay thank you children